guys, how's it going? So I'm really excited for today's project. Aaron and I are getting ready to load up 10 huge containers to take down to our city's brand new splash pad. And I think he's already out there working on getting them loaded up. Let's go take a look. How's it going? These are big. They are big, but you're able to handle them by yourself. Yeah. You don't even need me for this part. <laughs> totally true. <laughs> So this is what the pots look like. They're called the Urban Vase 31 from Earth Planter in the color gray granite, which I think is really nice. It's a very neutral color. They are self-watering with a wicking system, which I'll talk more about when we get down there. I think we're just gonna get them all loaded up and transported at this point. So all 10 of the containers fit perfectly in the back of the truck, which is great because that's one less trip for us. We're gonna have to come back for soil and for flowers, but I'm so excited because the splash pad is brand new for our city. It's not even open yet. The grand opening is in two weeks, so we thought it would be perfect to get the containers down there and planted, get them growing a little bit, and it's just a really fun way to be involved because we're gonna take Benjamin down there all the time. He's gonna love it. I think he will. Um, so it's just a fun way to be involved in what our city's doing. So everything is clearly still under construction. They're working on the last finishing touches. I'm gonna go check things out here and see how we can get in. Yeah, it looks like they're working on something, Vale Electric, but check this out, you guys. So this is the entrance right here. Um, this part will probably have a little bit of landscaping possibly, but it all looks really fun and colorful. I cannot wait to see it in operation. So this is actually the main street of town that runs by the splash pad, and this is huge. So there's restrooms over here, a couple of shade areas, the actual splash pad portion, and they're putting in another structure on that side there. Um, and then there's that shade there, and then this is how you get in. There's wheelchair access, and then some stairs there. Now we gotta figure out where all of these are gonna go. Yeah, we do. So we need to be a little strategic about where these go. We want them to show up, um, so we don't want them scattered everywhere throughout the splash pad, and we also want them in places that are convenient. We don't want them in the way at all. We're actually meeting one of the city guys down here at some point. Um, he's actually one of the uh, men that helped us hugely with the watering of the downtown pots um, when I very first started that project up. Uh, so he'll be down here in a while. We're gonna go ahead and kind of place these where we think that they should go, and then we may need to move them around a little bit based on what their end plans are. So we've got them all placed and I have to say that I'm really excited because when I saw them all stacked up in the truck and then stood in here in person and saw how massive this splash pad is, I thought, oh my goodness, this area is just gonna gobble up these pots and we're gonna need a whole bunch more, but they're not even planted yet and they're making quite a statement up here. I'm really excited about it. So we decided to put all of them either by an existing post, like this is a light post right here, or by like the corner of a building or a post of a structure. That way they'd be the least in the way. There's nothing like out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, if you look this way, you can see this one here. And then we've got them kind of dotted along the exterior just by light posts. And then they kind of wrap around all the way to the back corner of that shade structure. And if I haven't already said it, I do want to give a huge thank you to Earth Planter for sending out these containers. When they very first contacted us and wanted to send them out, I didn't really want to plant them up and put them at our house because that's not really what they're meant for. They're not really meant for individual residences. Um, they're meant for applications like this, like commercial projects, cities, um, colleges, churches, things like that. Um, so it dovetailed perfectly that we could bring them down here, that we had this brand new splash pad going in, that we had a way now to be involved because Benjamin is going to be using this and we wanted to have a way to give back a little bit for what this is going to provide for our own son um, and I know a lot of you guys are interested in stuff like this especially after we've showed you our downtown container project that it's going now for about eight years if I would have known about self-watering containers <laughs> I would not have chose the pots that I did. They're beautiful, but it's not efficient. We spend a lot of man hours watering those containers, um, keeping them looking nice, and we just get a ton of messages from you guys, especially after we show those containers about like how we start a project like that, what are the best type of containers. And I know a lot of cities won't even touch containers that are not self-watering now. Like it is a requirement. Um, so I'm really excited to see how these do. I don't have any personal experience with these, um, but they are self-watering. There's a top port right here. 
um, that you can just pop open, put your hose in there. Average watering is about once every two weeks. Now that will depend on your climate, like here where there's really no protection, which you don't really want protection from the sun for a splash pad. You want it to be nice and bright and warm and sunny. Um, and this will get quite a bit of wind, so it might be a little bit more frequent, just depending. Um, on the inside here, you can see kind of how the system works. Um, so the water reservoir is right below here. This is carpeting. Um, so I'm really looking forward because I've never used one with carpeting, but I guess it's a super efficient way to do this. And it's a great wicking system. So it uh, uh, releases moisture as a, the plant's roots need it, and then it withholds it once that soil up here is saturated. Um, and let me flip it upside down so you can see down below here. So there's an overflow drain right here, which I love the fact that it's on the bottom. I have used self-watering containers before where they drill a hole in the side of the container. In fact, I've got a couple of them at our house and we have such hard water that, you know, it's inevitable that we will have a little bit of overflow in case somebody accidentally gets a reservoir too um, full and that water will run down the side and then it just makes a hard water trail down the sides of your pots that I can't get off. Um, and then right here is your drain. Um, so one thing about these, which is really interesting, is that uh, these are protected, like they're um, suited for winters. You don't have to bring them inside. You can leave them out. All you have to do is take the drain out. All the water will drain out of the container, and then you can just leave them be if you want to. You can take them in if you want or not. This needs to remain in there um, during the season when you have them planted, but then out once you hit freezing temperatures. Um, and then one other thing that I like is I do like the finish here. This, like I said, is gray granite. It's got that kind of rock finish um, and it's UV. It has UV inhibitors in it, so it won't fade. It like protects it against fading. So if any of you guys are interested in something like this for a commercial application, again, these aren't really for residences, personal residences, but if you have a business or you want to work with the city or you work with the city and want to start a big container project, definitely give Earth Planter a shout. We'll put a link down below so you can learn more. They've got lots of different sizes, um, styles and colors, like different color finishes. Um, and they also have uh, self-watering hanging baskets that I really want to try at some point because hanging baskets are hard in our area because it's so hot and windy. Um, anyway, we'll put the link down below if you want to check that out. So now we need to go get all of our soil and plants so we can get these all prettied up. Well, the sun decided to come out for a little bit, which is nice. We've got the truck full of soil and our cart save our backs a little bit. So we're gonna get that all up by the pot. So each one of these containers holds 3.2 cubic feet of soil and you need to use a soilless mix, so nothing like garden dirt or compost based. Um, we're using the Espoma organic potting mix. Um, we have two cubic foot bags, so each pot should only use uh, not quite two bags. And then I've got my hose here because you're supposed to, I read up on the instructions, as you fill the containers with soil, you're supposed to moisten it. It shouldn't feel soggy, but just slightly moist. Also, filling the water reservoir should be the very last thing you do because they get really heavy when they're full of water. The instruction said it should feel spongy. That's feeling pretty spongy. Need a little bit more. Yeah, I think that is perfect right there. Okay, a little more. Used to being able to make a big mess whenever I plant anything, so trying real hard here. Feels good. All right, next bag. We're gonna have to bring something down to clean up my mess. I just can't garden clean. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna do that with all the rest of the containers. So nine more containers. Then we're gonna go get our plants, plant them up. And in the very end, we will fill up the reservoir. So we've got all the containers full of soil. The soil is moistened. So now we just need to run and grab the plants. So in keeping with the colors that they've already got going on up there, these are the flowers we have decided to go with. Check these out. So many fun, bright colors. I think it's gonna be perfect. I think they'll show up really well. And I actually went through and each one of these flats goes for one pot. So each one has a centerpiece. Each one has different flowers. It's just going to be really fun. So what we're going to do is take all of these up and we'll place a flat by each one of the pots and then 
we will plant them up. So we've got the plants placed in each one of the containers and they already look so pretty even though I haven't planted a single thing yet. But I thought we could do a, just a quick walkthrough tour so I can show you what's gonna go into each one of the containers. So we're gonna start with this first one right at the entryway. So I've got for my centerpiece this purple fountain grass which will grow nice and tall. Then we've got Supertunia Lovey Dovey. Look at how sweet these little flowers are. A little striped bright pink and white. Then we've got Supertunia Vista Silverberry, which is a proven, like it's a, an amazing performer in containers. We've got Supertunia Royal Magenta here, beautiful bright pop of pink. And then we have a Sweet Caroline Light Green Sweet Potato Vine for our foliage trailer. So that is our first container. And also I will be putting the slow release fertilizer in each one of the containers as we go. So let's head this direction. We've got another kind of pink and purple pot right here. So here we have a purple fountain grass again as a centerpiece. We have Supertunia Vista bubblegum, which will be amazing and nice and bright. Another uh, Supertunia Vista silverberry. We've got Superbina large lilac blue, which we used in our front hay racks last year. And it was just an enormous performer. And I think that's basically what I have in here for my blend. I think it's just a really pretty soft look. Next one is over here. So this one has a different centerpiece. This is the Toucan uh, Scarlet Canna. We're using three of those in the center, which will have those really bright scarlet blooms. So then I use the Superbina Scarlet Star. There are three of them in this container for that nice pop of bright red. Supertunia Royal Velvet. And then there is a Lady Godiva Calendula, Lady Godiva Orange. I actually wintered this over in our greenhouse. So I'm quite proud of this little flower right here. This one actually reminds me of one of the ones I did at home along our fence line. This is the Toucan Yellow Canna, so the bright yellow blooms and the nice bright green foliage. Um, we've got Super Bell's Lemon Slice. Look at this one plant. Look at that. That is huge. These, these aren't as big, but they will get there. Um, then we've got a um, Super Tunia. This is Snowdrift. This is one of the new ones for next year, and these are the ones we used in my parents' containers. So there are three of those. And then I've got a Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Red Sweet Potato Vine. So we have a nice contrasting foliage color here and something a little bit dark to trail over the side. So this one right here, I think it's gonna be a really interesting blend of colors. We have another purple fountain grass right here. Then we've got Super Tunia Honey, which is like a beautiful blend of pinks, apricot yellow, kind of a mustardy yellow color. They're just really beautiful. They kind of just evolve um, throughout their, their time. Like, look at this. Look at the different colors just on that one plant. I love it. Then we've got Super Tunia Royal Velvet. There's another Superbina Large Lilac Blue. There's a couple of them in here. I thought that this was kind of a pretty blend. And then I've got Bandana Lemon Zest Lantana in here, which will throw up these beautiful bright yellow, um, some of them kind of have some white in them as well, flowers. So I think this will just be a really nice eye-catching one from the street, which is right here. <laughs> So this one right here, I'm using a different centerpiece. This is a Skyrocket Penicetum, and I love to use these because they grow like a purple fountain grass, but they have a much different look. They give you that brighter look with that white variegation there. And then I've got a gorgeous blend of, it looks like just Supertunias in this one. I've got Supertunia Royal Magenta, Supertunia Vista Silverberry, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, and one Supertunia Bordeaux. This is quite a bit like the one on the far end, like on the, I think it was maybe the third or so pot we looked at. Um, that's why this one is kind of separated. It's over on this side. Um, this is a Toucan Scarlet Canna in the center. Again, the Scarlet Star Superbina right here. Super Junior Royal Velvet, the Lady Godiva Orange Calendula. Um, the only difference is I did put a Sweet Caroline Bewitched Green with Envy Sweet Potato Vine in here, which has a really in, like distinct, uh, unique looking leaf. I love that. So this one will be really interesting. This is a crushed crimson dahlia, uh, and I just love the deep color. Like usually I'm not a red person, but I really like this. I actually planted some of these in my garden this year. And then I've got some Supertunia white. There are three of them around here. And then in between those, I have Supertunia royal velvet, the bandana lemon zest. We've got Superbina scarlet star, and then the sweet Caroline light green sweet potato vine. So this one I'm loving. This one has a Prince Tut grass in the center, which will give, I don't know, I think it's like perfect for a splash pad. Kind of that water, that looks like a water grass. 
We've got Super Tunia Royal Magenta around the outside with Super Tunia White as well. Then we have a Sweet Caroline um, Light Green Sweet Potato Vine. And we have the Luscious Berry Blend Lantana. Look at the colors in this. So tropical looking. And the very last container has the Crushed Crimson Dahlias again as our centerpiece. We have Super Bell's Yellow. There are three of them, kind of spaced evenly. And then we've got Super Tunia Bordeaux. Sweet Caroline, Bewitched Green with Envy again here as our foliage accent. And then a Dark Knight, Lobularia or Sweet Alyssum. This is a huge plant too. I thought that would be really pretty. And then the last one is the Angel Face Cascade Blue Angelonia, which we'll put on a little bit of height, you can see, but it also will kind of intermingle and trail over the side. So I thought it would be a good one to put right back here so it could kind of like trail forward. I don't know, we'll see as the season progresses how these all fill in. So now what I'm gonna do is just go around and get them all planted and watered in. pots are planted up we've got them watered in and the reservoir is filled except for this last one here so on the first day when you get done planting them you do want to water them in from overhead just kind of like this just to settle in the root ball settle the soil in around the root balls and make sure that they're all like nice and kind of tucked into their new home and you do want to check them and possibly water them from overhead a few more times depending on what the weather is like like Right now it's actually fairly cool for us still, so we'll probably come check on them in the next few days. Um, if you have extreme heat or extreme wind, you may have to check on them more often, but you'll wanna just make sure to keep them watered from overhead just until they have a chance to settle in and root in a little bit um, to where they can start wicking up the water from the reservoir. But it's really not a long transition period, and then they will start lasting longer and using out of that reservoir. So to fill up the reservoir, I'm gonna take the end of my wand off here. And then we pop the little cap off of the port, put the hose in, and start filling. The first time you fill up the reservoirs, or if you let them get like really low, it takes quite a long time to fill them up. These hold quite a lot of water. Yep, you see that? You can see the overflow is working. Our reservoir is full. Um, so, you know, we'll probably get a little bit better at gauging how much water we need to put in these things. You know, like I said, this is my first experience with them so that we don't have water collecting under the pots. That's another benefit of having a container like this. Um, so we're just gonna put the cap back on the reservoir and we're just gonna make it a weekly habit to come down here once a week. We'll top up the reservoirs and we'll fertilize the plants. And that's basically all the maintenance that we're gonna need to do on these plants because everything, every plant I showed you today does not need to be deadheaded. They're all pretty maintenance free unless we need to come in later in the summer and start trimming them because they've reached the ground. And many of them probably will do that at some point along the way. Um, and we'll show you those things as they happen. So one more thing about the earth planters, they are made in New York and they have a 10 year warranty on the pot and a five year warranty on the wicking system. Um, which I think is great. And again, we will link everything down below so you can check them out if you're interested in doing some kind of a commercial or business type um, project. Um, so anyway, that is it for this video. I'm so, so thankful to Earth Planter for sending these out that we could do something like this. I think it's gonna be really great for our city. I think the kids are gonna love the splash pad and I think the adults will really appreciate having something very pretty down here. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.